Hello again, internet friends. My name is Curtis, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you to become a vicious green dragon. So hang on to your dice bags, because this is another episode of Roll Initiative. You've been walking for what feels like days through the undergrowth of an ancient forest. Acrid fog hangs heavily about the air, burning your lungs and stinging your eyes. A full moon casts beams of shimmering silver through the treetops, and through them you catch only a brief glimpse of a shadow as it passes through the darkness on your left, and then again on your right, and then silence. No birds, no rustling of leaves just deep, disturbing silence. And then a laugh. <laughs> I intended to go hunting this evening, but it looks as if my meal has come to me. Tell me, heroes, have you come to slay me? To save your city. To line your pockets with my riches. Well, I have a better idea. Perhaps we could make a deal. What do you do? And that is just a taste of the kind of role playing that we're going to try to teach you guys here today. Welcome back to Roll Initiative, everybody. The little show where a small band of nerds tries to teach the internet how to role play like the big dogs. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. So, in the last video, I briefly talked about the 5th edition starter set and the adventure that comes with it, The Lost Minds of Fandelver. Now, in that adventure, there is a young green dragon named Venom Fang. And I think Venom Fang is a very important character. And the reason that I think that is because. Since this is the 5th edition starter set, this might be the first time that some of your players have ever played Dungeons & Dragons before, which means it might be the first time that some of them have ever encountered an archetypal creature like a dragon. That means it's your job as the DM, no pressure, to get this encounter perfect, because it might just set the tone for what your players expect from Dungeons & Dragons going forward. This information is, however, going to be universal which means if you're a grizzled veteran who's just here to get a little bit better at role-playing Green Dragons for your games, then this is going to work for you as well. Now, in order to really make your dragons pop out of your games, we're going to talk about two things. The first is how to role-play them effectively. And that's going to almost be a psychology lesson on what makes a green dragon a green dragon. And the second is going to be how to voice them. Uh, that's a little bit more complicated. It'll take some practice. Not everybody loves doing voices, and if you're not interested in that, then you can just completely ignore it. Uh, when we get done with the uh, role-playing advice, you can just skip on to the next video. Um, but if you are here and interested in voices, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the tricks that I use to really bring my dragons to life, like I did in that clip earlier. So, to get started on the role-playing advice, we're first going to start with a little draconology lesson. I think it's important that if we're going to talk about green dragons, that first you need to learn a little bit about chromatic dragons in general. That's the colored ones like red, blue, green, black, and white. Um, they all share common attributes, and that is that they are driven by greed, that they have huge egos, and that they almost always have some kind of dangerous layer. Um, each one is different in the way that they... Uh, balance out in those specific attributes, but they all have them, which means it's important going into learning how to play your green dragon to know that that's what drives these type of dragons in general. Now, general knowledge is only going to get you so far. So what is it that makes a green dragon unique from the other dragons? And I think that's where the monster manual comes in. One thing that the 5th edition monster manual does a lot better than previous editions has is that it really breaks down the creatures from a role-playing aspect. It gives you information on their personalities, on their histories, on where they come from. And that's why I actually think that having a hard copy of the monster manual is really important. I know a lot of people just use um, websites like Roll20 and everything to get the stat blocks, but this hardcover monster manual really goes a little bit farther and explains 
why these creatures are more than just stat blocks. So if you don't have one, I'll put a link down in the description um, to Amazon to pick one up. They're pretty cheap on there. I highly recommend it. It is super worth it um, if you're interested in the role-playing aspect of everything about your game, including the creatures. So in order to start off, um, I'm actually going to just read a blurb from the very beginning of the Green Dragon section because I think it does the best job at really laying out what makes a green dragon a green dragon. So, green dragons are the most cunning and treacherous of true dragons. Green dragons use misdirection and trickery to get the upper hand on their enemies. Nasty-tempered and thoroughly evil, they take special pleasure in subverting and corrupting the good-hearted. In the ancient forest they roam, green dragons demonstrate an aggression that is often less about territory than it is about gaining power and wealth with as little effort as possible. Red dragons might be massively strong and destructive. Black dragons might be exceptionally malevolent. White dragons might be the most bestial. But green dragons are among the smartest and are far and away the most deceptive. So if you learn nothing today, at least leave knowing that if you want to play your green dragons correctly, they need to be lying, conniving, belligerent sociopaths instead of outright killers. To quote the dragon's wiki, to a green dragon, a weak creature is either prey or pawn, and nearly all creatures are weak. That's just their personality. Green dragons have a massive superiority complex, and if you want to play them right, you have to play into that. If you do nothing else, just play into that, you'll play a better green dragon. The next thing to note about a green dragon is that they're one of the lawful evil dragons, which means they are more likely to engage with a local community than just burn it to the ground like a red dragon might. In fact, a green dragon might even go as far as brokering some sort of peace deal with a local politician, assuming that the deal is in their own benefit. I could even see a green dragon going as far as intentionally moving up the ladder politically through the use of minions and bribes just to see how far they could get. And then if they get caught, they'll probably just get bored and move on. Or, in the same breath, they might decide that intimidation and terrorizing that village back into submission is just as fun to them. The Monster Manual refers to green dragons as capricious hunters, and I think that's a very important word to understand the definition of, because it is a very key aspect of the green dragon's personality. Capricious is essentially another word for fickle. It means they can change their mind or their attitude, their mood or their behavior on a moment's notice, seemingly with no provocation. That means that when you're dealing with a green dragon, anything's game. You could be in the middle of a negotiation with them and they could just change their mind and decide, nope, I'm done, I'm going to eat this guy. So that's key for you to know as somebody who's going to be role-playing them. Use that to throw your players off guard. Let your players think that they are doing something to get over on this dragon or they're making some traction against him. Um, in a role play scenario and then just have it change its mind and go some completely other direction and throw them off. Maybe just decide it wants to eat them. Maybe decide it just wants to leave. Um, really lean into that capriciousness. It's a key aspect of their personality. And I think if you really want to nail that um, experience for your players, that's one of the key things that you have to hone in on. The next thing to remember about green dragons is that they have one of the biggest egos of all of the chromatic dragons. So while they may just eat beasts and monsters outright uh, if they're wandering around their territory, when it comes to sentient creatures like your players, they're much more likely to try to manipulate or enslave them than they are to outright fight them. The dragon doesn't want to just kill them. The dragon wants to be in control of them. It wants to dominate them. And so that's another thing that you need to lean into as the DM Understand that the dragon has its own goals when it encounters your players. It wants to be in charge. It wants to play them against each other. It wants to lead them on. It wants to lie to them. It wants to see how far it can get. It wants to have fun with them. And then at the end, it's either going to decide that it wants to enslave them or kill them. And that brings us to arguably the most important aspect of the green dragon. They are smooth talkers. When they encounter your players, they are absolutely going to use their most dangerous weapon on them, and that's their charisma. If they think that they can manipulate any of your players, they absolutely will. They will play on their deepest desires, 
They will make them promises. They will offer them deals. They will do everything that they can to try to get a one up on your party. And they're probably just going to do it for fun. The green dragon can fight them. It just doesn't want to. It wants to play with them. And that's when you get to have fun as the DM really leaning into that side of the green dragon. Try to drive a wedge between your players. Be evil. Have fun with it. It's my favorite part of being a DM, uh, getting to play characters like that. So savor it because this is one of the good ones. It's also worth noting that like any proper dragon, green dragons love treasure. But there's an added caveat to that that is sort of specific to green dragons. The most prized possession that any green dragon can have is some sort of sentient creature that it is utterly broken. Some hero, some bard of legend, some huge political figure that they have manipulated to the point that they have broken that creature and it is now their servant. Those are their most prized possessions. So if you want to add a little bit of detail uh, to really make that dragon pop out of your game for your characters, maybe have somebody in their horde that uh, fits that bill. So the last thing that I want to do before I move on to the kind of voice work that I do for Green Dragons is I just want to read off a quick list of details from the Monster Manual that I think really kind of help deepen your encounter around the Green Dragon. I don't think any of them is really long enough to have its own section, so I'm just going to read them off real quick, give a quick comment on them. Um, the first of which is that Green Dragons do not get along with other dragons, even more so than other Chromatics. They just have nasty tempers and they're fiercely territorial. Um, so that gives you a cool opportunity as a DM to potentially have a plot hook where like a green dragon and a black dragon are battling where the forest and the swamp uh, overlap just outside of a town. And as a player, that would really draw me in. Um, the next thing is that they absolutely hate elves. Green dragons have an ancient grudge against elves. And so if you have an elf in your party or if you have an elf NPC, that gives you a really cool opportunity um, to sort of customize the experience for your players and really hone in on that elf and try to drive a wedge between them and the rest of the party. Um, they're also uh, not above taking slaves or minions. So as your players approach a green dragon's lair, it's likely that they're going to run across things that are working for them, uh, like goblins or even other humans and elves and dwarves and stuff that they have just broken mentally and now are sworn servants to the dragon. Uh, they are also known to leave somebody alive after they wipe a party out. And the reason that they do that is because that person can then go on and spread the word of their terror, uh, which is crazy, but it gives you an opportunity as the DM to potentially have that survivor approach your party. Uh, and as a plot hook, tell them the terror that happened with that green dragon. So I think that's kind of a cool little detail. Um, and the last one is their regional effects and their layer effects. Now, all of the chromatic dragons have these, but I think the green dragon ones are especially important from a roleplay standpoint because they're really, they have a cool ambience to them. Um, for example, their layers often have labyrinthine thickets and brambles around them. So your players have probably been to a forest before, but when they come into the dragon's forest, this is the first time that they see one like this. That's basically a maze of thorns. Um, and that's really cool. Uh, and in that forest, a dense, acrid, magical fog hangs around. Uh, and that fog has the ability to charm people that are in it. So that gives you an opportunity to um, either have minions that have been driven mad by the fog running around. Or if your players have to sleep or rest in the forest, it gives you an opportunity to mess with them. Um, if the fog gives them nightmares or gives them hallucinations or something. Um... Also, the animals in a green dragon's forest are the dragon's eyes and ears. Uh, they have been corrupted by the fog, and so the dragon can use them as spies. That's why they make no noise. That's why the dragon always knows where you are when you're in its forest, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the dragon, regardless of its size, leaves no trace that it's been there in its forest. The forest literally magically moves out of its way. So even if you have this massive ancient dragon just moving through the forest, the trees will dive out of its way because it is just so magic and in tuned with its uh, layer. And I think that's super cool. Uh, and the last detail only gets mentioned in one sentence in the monster manual. Um, it's something that I personally have never been able to master, but if you can do it, uh, it would be really super awesome. And that is that they are masters of double talk. And what double talk is, is the intentional mixing of nonsense words and syllables with real words in order to confuse people. 
So it's literally talking gibberish on purpose. Uh, the sentence sounds like it should make sense, but when you break it down, there's just nonsense syllables in there that make no sense, and it can really throw your players for a loop if you can pull it off. Um, like I said, I've never been able to do that, um, but if you can, I think that would be a super cool detail. So that does it for the role-playing section of the video. So now let's talk about how I do my voice for my dragons. Um, doing a little bit of voice acting uh, for your players really helps elevate your game. It's one of the reasons that Critical Role is as popular as it is. Those guys are all super cool and it's fun to watch them. But because they can do those awesome voices, especially Matt bringing all those characters to life, it really elevates their game to another level. So if I can teach you to even do 25% of what they're doing, uh, it's going to make you have a lot more fun. It's going to make your players have a lot more fun. And that's really what D&D is all about. Um, so like I said, I've got a list of tips here. I'm going to go through. I'm going to explain them to you. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to look like a complete idiot. Uh, so feel free to laugh. That's what D&D is all about. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started now. All right. So first things first, um, I highly recommend you warm up before you do any kind of voices, even before your D&D games. Um, you don't need to do a lot, but you definitely want to loosen up your vocal cords so you don't tear them apart. Um, I'll do a video a little bit later about the vocal warm-ups that I do. They're real quick. They're real easy. They make a difference. They help your voice sound better, and they help protect your voice. So warm up. Um, so the first thing that I do when I'm doing my dragon voice um, is that I make sure that the sound that I'm making comes from the back of my throat. Um, when you speak from the front of your throat, you lose a lot of control. It's the difference between going... E and ah. Uh. When it's back there, you can use the muscles in your throat and your tongue to shape the sound better. It'll be deeper. It'll be more resonant. Um, you don't want to strain when you're doing this. The voice that I do isn't squeezing that rumbly sound onto um, your voice. It's almost like a really loud whisper that you just layer that rumble on top of. Um, and I'll show you a little bit uh, in a second about how I do that. Um, Another note is that it requires a lot of air, so you're going to want to breathe deeply before you start. You're going to want to take lots of breaths. You're going to want to go slow, speak slowly, um, so you don't get lightheaded, that kind of thing. So what you're going to want to do is take a deep breath, and then you're going to want to exhale through your throat um, with your mouth open wide. And so it's going to be like this. Just simple like that. Now you heard that wispy sound on there. We want to get rid of that by opening your throat up a little bit more. So it's going to be. And you can hear already it's becoming deeper and more resonant. And now all you're going to do is engage your vocal cords just a little bit on top of that uh, in the back of your throat, way down here, and just add that rasp to it. And so it's going to be. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't put a lot of strain on my voice. And that's where the voice happens. That's the most important part of doing this voice. Everything that I'm going to tell you after this is just little details and tweaks to give it that sort of draconic feel. But what you want to practice doing is talking that way. You take your deep breath, let it out and rumble, and then start trying to add words. Hello. Yes. I I'm a green dragon. And that's all it is. So then from there, we're going to go into the next point, which is that dragons don't have lips. Dragons are big lizards. Their lips uh, don't seal real well. So in order to kind of simulate that, uh, you want to make your mouth close as little as possible when you're talking. Uh, a dragon can't go, you're already a big step ahead of the dragon uh, just by being able to do that. So when you are doing that other voice, you next want to try to layer on top of that uh, the idea that you don't have any lips. So, ah, I am a dragon. And now your lips. I am a dragon. Yes. You're going to shape all of your sounds with your tongue and your teeth. Keep your mouth open as much as you can. You can close it a little bit to get some of those letters like P and B. You need it to do that. Um, but as little as possible... Keep your mouth open. The next thing is, is that you want to keep your mouth really wide. Dragons have really huge, great big mouths. They're stretched out. So if you want to simulate that the sound, or I'm sorry, if you want to simulate the sound a dragon might make, you want to pull your lips very far back. So, 
Yes, I am a green dragon. It's different than going, yes, I am a green dragon. The tone is the same, but the sound of the voice is different when you have your lips pulled back. It'll give you that more draconic sound. Next, um, your dragon is breathy. He's got breath weapons. He's huge. When he takes deep breath, it echoes. So intentionally stop and take a long breath uh, between the things that you're saying. Like, yes, I am a great dragon. I am a big green dragon. Yes. You don't have to keep saying yes. It's just a really easy word to practice on. Um, but those long, drawn-out breathiness um, segments will make your dragon more believable to your players. Um, next, your dragons are big and they live a really long time. So feel free to speak slowly. Drag out your syllables, especially uh, syllables like long N's or long S's. Just hold on them like, like I've been doing. Yes. They hiss a little bit. They're reptiles. Lean into that. Um the other thing you want to do is dragons have big teeth and sharp fangs. So when you're doing the voice, bear them. Uh, yes. <sighs> Bring your lower jaw forward a little bit. Speak through the space between your lower teeth and your front teeth. I will destroy you. <laughs> it just makes it sound like you have big stupid fangs. Um, again, you're going to look like a complete idiot while you're doing it. Um, but in my experience, your players are going to think it's super cool and you've gone to a next level. Um, it's little details like that that really makes it stand out. Uh, and lastly, just remember that dragons are smug and have that huge sense of superiority. So spit your words at them. They don't just speak. They throw those words at, their, at whoever they're talking to. Like, you are a fool. You will never have my riches. If you spit for real, bonus points. And that's it. That's what I do when I'm doing a dragon voice. If you bring all of those things together, um, you will bring your dragon to life. They will come flying out of your game at your players, uh, and they'll just think you're the coolest person in the world. So practice it. If you have any questions or if you need more um, insight on the techniques that I'm using, feel free to drop a comment down below or hit us up on Twitter. Um, I'll happily help you out. Who knows? I'll... Maybe hop on a Skype call or something and voice coach you. Um, but that's it for the voice. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for sticking around. If you like the video, please click like. If you want to see more like it, of course, subscribe. Uh, and if you want to be one of the first people to find out when we release new content, hit that little bell guy up top. As always, we look forward to creating a community with you guys. So please drop us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the video. Let us know if you have any ideas for other videos. Let us know if you hated it. Just put something down there. Uh, we want to engage with our community. Um, and also, if you like the video, share it with your friends. Um, we're still just getting started. So uh, we need you to get it out there for us. Um, you may have also noticed we have no ads on this channel. Uh, we're probably not going to have ads on this channel. Um, so if you want to support us, um, there's some links down below. Uh, to some of the basic um, core rule books for D&D. Um, on Amazon, you can follow those, you can buy them there, uh, and we get a small portion of the proceeds. Um, and if you really wanna support the channel, uh, if you're ever gonna buy anything on Amazon, just come here, click one of those links, and then just go buy whatever you want. Uh, we'll still get a portion of those proceeds, um, but we don't wanna put ads up. I, I think it's a bad experience. Um, I'd rather just engage with you guys and make cool videos and make D&D cool. Um, so that's where we're at with that. And that's it. So until next time, don't forget... Dragon.